Hey yeah, folks, JD here, and today we're going to look at two things actually. The GPS compass calibration of the DJI Spark, as well as a little brief overview of the DJI Go 4 application as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do to begin with is turn this on, and I'm going to connect my phone then to the Wi-Fi of the Spark. So then, for the purpose of this video, what I'm going to do, I'm now going to click calibrate, and then this will start the calibration of the compass. Now, the, the, the DJI app will take you through exactly how to do this, and then you can twist this, uh, this spark in order to complete the compass calibration. Now, I will let you know that it, it is going to fail for me today, uh, but this is just a de for demonstration purposes only. Now, the reason it's going to fail for me is because I've got far too many, far too much magnetic interference around me. And, the, and obviously because I'm indoors as well, the GPS can't lock on properly and therefore can't calibrate correctly. Uh, so, that's exactly what you need to do, obviously, when you are outside, as you saw in the video yesterday. It will just calibrate as long as you don't make any sudden movements of the quadcopter like I did the first time when I hit one of the propellers. So, now that the compass is calibrated, now that you're ready to go, now what you need to know is you need to know exactly how to use this application. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take you through some of the features that I used yesterday and where to find them. So to begin with, the button up on the top left, which is the automatic takeoff button. Now when you click that, you have to then slide to take off and the spark will fly up to four foot and hover there. Um, now the button directly underneath that is return to home. Now the next one down, you've got a little transmitter icon. This is how I changed the different modes. So I changed to quick shot, active track, track and gesture when I click quick shot uh, then obviously then you it then brings you up a bit more information you can use helix you can use droney and a few other options active track is where it tracks you and it follows you around like it followed me around yesterday and gesture is palm control and a lot of other different options as well um, so they were just three of the things I used yesterday uh, but obviously if you click normal you then go back to the application again uh, and then you can start all over now the bottom icon on the left hand side the little circle that is just to enable you to get these two little white dots in the center this is obviously your uh, your transmitter now if you like me I like to have the little buttons on the screen uh, just because when it is it's always nice to look down and see exactly what your fingers are doing uh, and also to get an idea of exactly which way you're turning I do like to have that there I do find it useful you can turn it off though and then you have uh, you have tap so you can just tap to places and it will fly uh, now over the right hand side we have gimbal modes you you can alter the gimbal so you can alter it down and you can alter it back up as well if you have gimbal tracking on which is something you can put on in the options then the uh, the gimbal will automatically follow you and track you so up onto the top right we have gimbal pitch tracking underneath this we have the option to uh, switch between photo and video the red button gives you the ability to take a photo and take video. Be, be careful though with this. Uh, what I would recommend is you turn off your video before you turn off the spark, just in case you lose the video that you've recorded. Underneath that, you have the options for the camera. So you can alter things like um, you can alter things like white balance. You can add grids. You can um, alter the me megapixel as well as well as uh, the shutter rate. Uh, so there's quite a few different options there you can use. And then underneath that, then you have the media player where you can see everything that you've recorded as well as you can edit things as well. This is, there is a small editor built in with uh, DJI Go 4. Now, across the top, this is a very important bar and I've left it until the last on purpose. Where you click no positioning, it brings up the information where you can recalibrate the compass as well as uh, some of the vision center sensors and you can see a bit more information over your quadcopter. Then working across, you have for the second, we've just on altitude hold because I haven't uh, calibrated the compasses. Next to that, we have the satellite button, shows you how many satellites you have. Then you have the transmission uh, signal, so the signal from your smartphone to your uh, to your drone. And then 80%, that's just your battery. Now, you'll see this little white rectangle uh, just below the, uh, the signal. Uh, bars there this is your overall battery percentage so that little white bar st starts over all the way on the right hand side and then works its way all the way over to the left hand side uh, and, and dependent on how much battery you have left the three dots this is where you alter all well most of the characteristics of your uh, of your spark looking at the top one this is where you turn beginner mode on and off beginner mode when you have that on you can't use sport mode you can't use hand gestures and a little ring fence is set up like we saw in the Ishin ex1 and the drone will fly back to the ring fence um, if you go outside of it 
you also have a, a max flight altitude and you also have max flight distance as well that you can alter. Uh, going through some more of these, the second option gives you the option to enable advanced gesture control like palm launch and palm land. Um, you, then you've got your Wi-Fi settings. You've got virtual joysticks including the max flight speed of your quadcopter. You've got aircraft battery, the three cells and how much voltage you have over the three cells including temperature. As well as a low battery warning which I have set to 19. And then you have gimbal settings which are on follow. You can alter that to FPV if you prefer. So there we go. That's just a little brief overview uh, of the DJI GO 4 and also how to calibrate the compass of this particular quadcopter. So there we are folks. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time my friends, happy flying.